Hiya. Uh, so th in this video, we're going to talk about, we're going to look at distributions and the different types of distributions we're going to see in this class regularly. Uh, so the first one we're going to talk about is called the Bernoulli distribution. Um, in the book, they call it the Bernoulli P distribution, which is why I have the P in the title. Um, but we're going to start off with that. Um, and so what is the Bernoulli distribution? Basically, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to generalize um, coin flips. So if you think of a coin flip, you generally have two outcomes, right? Either heads or tails. And so what we're going to suppose here is we're going to suppose that we have exactly two outcomes. We're going to suppose that omega is either A or B, right? That's it. Normally with a coin flip, the probability of flipping a coin is one half. But what happens if I have an unfair coin? And this is where Bernoulli kicks in. Um, I'm going to change the probability and I'm going to say that P of A is going to be equal to P, where P is just some arbitrary number um, in the interval 0, 1. It can be 0, it can be 1, I don't care, but it has to be in that um, area. Um, and once we, And then we can notice that the complement of A is B and the complement of B is A, and that basically gives us that this is a distribution. So let's quickly look at this. Uh, we're not going to prove this in full detail, but we're going to look at this um, um, off the hand. Um, so remember, there's the three things we have to verify, right? We need positivity, we need um, addition, and we need total one. Uh, so, so pos, addition, and total one. Uh, so let's see if these three things hold. Well, positivity, we know P of empty is zero, P of omega is one, and the probability of A is always positive, right? It's between zero and one. Uh, probability of B is the same, right? It's going to be between zero and one. It's going to be the opposite of A, whatever that is, right? It's P of B is equal to one minus P. Um, and so that's done. So... Next up, we need to show that its um, addition is okay. Um, and to see addition, what we're basically going to do is we're going to look at the only partition we have. The only partition we have is taking omega and splitting it into two different parts. So we have omega is equal to A partition B. This is the only one we have. And so what we need, we need this to be true. We need P of omega to equal P of A plus P of B. Well, P of omega, we know... Um, is equal to 1. So already we know off the bat that total 1 is okay. Uh, and then here, P of A, right, we define P of A to be P. P of B, we define to be 1 minus P. And so we have P plus 1 minus P, well, that's just 1, which is equal to P of omega, and so we're done. So addition also works. So this is basically how you verify if I have some function, whether it's a distribution or not. You check these three rules. If it satisfies these three rules, you're done. Uh, so let's look at another distribution, the discrete uniform distribution. Okay, so just like the last one, it was a generalization of something. This one's also going to be a generalization of something. In this case, we're generalizing dice rules. Uh, so what we have is instead of saying we have six-sided die, we're going to say we have an n-sided die. So I have n number of elements. Uh, so we have omega is equal to n. Where is my highlighter? Highlighter! Omega is equal to 1 through n. Um, and just like rolling a die, this time instead of allowing the probability to be whatever, like the last distribution, in this one we're going to set the distribution, or the probability. We're going to make the probability always equal to 1 over n. In other words, every outcome is equally likely. Now this idea of every outcome being equally likely each outcome being equally likely, this is the definition of uniform, equals uniform. Um, and that's where the uniform comes in for a discrete uniform distribution. Discrete comes from because we're, we're able to count the numbers. Um, so this is where discrete uniform distribution, the name, comes from. Uh, note that in the book, this is called to a uniform distribution on a finite set. Uh, this is old terminology. Most people now will say discrete uniform distribution. Um, so I'd rather use modern language uh, for this. 
so the to verify um, this, like to make sure this is a distribution, again, we need to do those three things. Uh, first, for to verify that it's um, positive, we're just going to notice that the probability um, A of any subset is just going to be the order of A divided by N. Um, and so that gives us um, a positive number always. Uh, partitioning you can prove inductively if you really want. Um, and then the final rule can be deduced by above. So basically the part, the probability of omega equal to one, you kind of get for free, right? It's just n over n, so it's just one. Um, notice that when n is equal to two, so if I let n be equal to two, then the uniform distribution is the same as the uh, Bernoulli one half distribution. So when p is equal to set to one half. Um, so yeah, in these cases, the two are the same. But other than that, they go in different directions. One, we allow the ends to change, uh, the number of elements to change. The other one, we allow the probability to change. Uh, anything in the middle is kind of a uh, gray area and it's a little more complicated, right? There's no nice um, thing. Uh, the last distribution we'll talk about is called the continuous uh, uniform distribution. Um, and what is this a generalization of? Well, this is a generalization of the discrete uniform distribution. Uh, yay. Uh, and so basically what this is, um, basically what we're doing is, okay, so with a discrete, we allowed n, the number of elements to be any number, right? We let it be one through n. What we're doing here now is instead of saying one through n, we're saying let, let's just make it be infinite number of infinite. Like just put, tons and tons of things, make it the real numbers. Um, and that is basically what we have. So what we do is we start off with some interval. So we take an interval a, b. Here we assume a is less than b just to be safe. Um, and we pick a point randomly in this interval. Uh, now notice that if I have some interval and I pick a point randomly, well, the probability that this point is picked is zero, right? Like there's no, it's one over infinite. So it's basically zero. It's not exactly zero, but as it goes to infinity, it goes towards zero. So because every point has an equal chance of being picked, right? And so we really can't ask the question of like, what is the probability of a certain point being picked? So instead in this case, what we're gonna look at is when intervals get picked. So um, if I have some interval here, right? So if I look at A to B, I'm going to look at basically two points X and Y, which are contained in this. And I'm going to say, what's the probability that I land here instead of landing outside? And in this case, if you think about it, uh, you should fairly easily see that the probability will be given by one minus X. I'll rewrite it here a little bigger. One minus X over B minus A. One Y minus X is this area here. B minus A is this. So it's just that little ratio. Um, and the thing here to kind of note is all of these things we can like scale, right? We can make them bigger or smaller if we wanted and still keep the same ratios. So there's a distribution called the standard uniform distribution, which is when we make a equal to zero and b equal to one. Um, and the nice thing about this, the reason why a equals zero and b equals one is if I make um, a equals zero and b equals one, I get one minus zero. So I get one minus X over one, which is just one minus Y minus X. So the standard uniform distribution is nice for us because it actually allows us to not have to worry about any denominators. We just look at the length of the interval and that gives us the probability. Um, I won't go into why this is a probability as well. Um, I think it should be fairly um, obvious. Well, not obvious, but like um, you can kind of think of the three um, probability, the things uh, positivity, um, uniform, those should be, or total one, Posi uh, the positivity and total one should be easy to see. Um, addition is a little harder to see, um, but I think uh, that should also be doable um, if you think about it a little bit. At least you'll get an idea of what that is. Um, and I think that's it for this. Yeah, that's it for um, this part. Uh, so thank you for being here. Um, and I will... I guess, see you next week for the rest of the talks. Um, bye. Thanks.